Now finally, we come to the theorems of Fubini and Tonelli. So, again we fix sigma finite measure spaces, two measure spaces x and y, uh, which are both sigma finite. And so, the theorem of Tonelli is, <coughs> is as follows. So, if you take a function f, which is an unsigned measurable function with respect to the sigma algebra, uh, product sigma algebra bx cross by, <coughs> then the integral of uh, the function f subscript x, remember that fx was a function from y to the non-negative reals in this case, which was defined as fxy as f of x comma y. So, this was the definition. Similarly, we, we can define f y to be given by f y evaluated at x is again f x y. So, the integral of f x, the first one, uh, <coughs> with respect to the measure d mu uh, mu y is a function of x and similarly the integral of f y with respect to d, uh, mu x is a function of y and so these two functions g x and g y are measurable. This is the first assertion in the theorem and secondly if you integrate f with respect to the product measure over the product space x cross y, this is the left hand side, then it is equal to the integral of g with respect to mu x and is equal to uh, the integral of h with respect to mu y. So, this is Tonelli's theorem which is valid for measurable functions which are unsigned in the product measure, in the product sigma algebra. So, <coughs> The theorem of Fubini is then for uh, is a generali generalization of Tonelli's theorem uh, when you have uh, no longer unsigned but complex valued uh, L1 functions in the product space. So, this is the theorem of Fubini which says that if f is an L1 function for the product measure, then the function f subscript x is in L1 mu y comma mu y. So, it is integrable with respect to mu y, absolutely integrable with respect to mu y for mu x almost everywhere x. So, not for all values of x, but only for uh, well, uh, for x outside of a null subset with respect to mu x. Similarly, f y belongs to L 1 x mu x for mu y almost everywhere y in y and then the almost everywhere defined functions g x and h y which are the integrals of f x and uh, f y are in l 1 and uh, l 1 of x and l 1 of y respectively. So, g belongs to l 1 of uh, x and uh, h belongs to l 1 of y and we again we have the uh, formula that the integral with respect to the product measure is equal to the integral of g and then the integral of h. Uh, so, this is a generalization of Tonelli's theorem for L1 functions uh, on the product measure space. So, let us see the proof for Tonelli's theorem which would imply the second part which is Fubini's theorem. So, for the proof of Tonelli's theorem, uh, we can divide it into a few cases and it the first one will uh, be simply the Tonelli's theorem for sets, which is the case when if f is the indicative function of a set S for some S belonging to B x cross B y. So, then Tonelli's theorem, the statement, the statement reduces to Tonelli's theorem for sets. 
this we have seen in the last lecture. So, this takes care of the case when f is the indicator function of a measurable set. The second case is that if f is a simple function again in the product space <coughs> then the statement follows from the first case statement follows from case 1. So, again by Tonelli's theorem for sets uh, using linearity because you will have finitely many uh, terms in the simple function. So, this is finite linear combination of uh, characteristic sets uh, characteristic functions of measurable sets and so by linearity uh, we get the uh, result for simple functions. And finally, if f is a general measurable function is uh, an unsigned b x cross b y measurable function then there exists a sequence of a se increasing sequence of uh, unsigned simple functions f n such that uh, f n converges to f pointwise as n tends to infinity. And so now since we have we already know this for simple functions uh, then we can state the following result. So, let g n be the integral of f n x uh, over x. So, g sorry this is an integral over y over y. So, uh, of course, the statement says that these are a measurable function, this is a measurable function uh, this is this follows from case 2 and we have that in the integral of f n on the product space with the product measure mu x cross mu y it is equal to the integral of g n over d mu x and this is also equal to h n similarly for d mu y where h n is defined similarly this is integral over f n y d mu x. So, this is over y. So, this holds for all n holds for all n greater than or equal to 1. And now, by the monotone convergence theorem, we have that g n x the limit of g n x this is equal to the limit as n tends to infinity of uh, these integrals f n x d mu y and since f n x increases pointwise to f x uh, this means that this is an increasing sequence converging pointwise to f x. So, this is the notation I have used f n x is an increasing sequence uh, of measurable functions such that limit over f n x equals f x as n goes to infinity. So, by the monotone convergence theorem we get that 
uh, the limit of g n x as n tends to infinity this is equal limit as n tends to infinity uh, g n x this is equal to the limit of f n x the integral of the limit over y and this is nothing but the integral of f x. So, this implies that and so of course, this is nothing but on the right hand side this is nothing but g of x. So, this means that g, g x is measurable in x. This means that g of x g rather is a measurable function on x. Similarly, one can show that h is a measurable function function on y and now if we integrate g with respect to x over the measure mu x then this is nothing but the limit as n tends to infinity g n d mu and this is again by monotone convergence theorem you can take the limit outside. So, this is limit n tends to infinity g n d mu x, but this integral was the same as the integral of the on the product of f n with respect to the product measure. And then again by the monotone convergence theorem we take the limit inside to get f d mu x cross mu y. So, we see that uh, the formula holds for g and similarly one can show it for h. Similarly, h d mu y equals x cross y f d mu x d of mu x cross mu y. So, this this proves Tonelli's theorem in the general case. So, now for Fubini's theorem if f is in L 1 of the product space then mod f is a is an unsigned measurable function is an integrable unsigned measurable function which means that Tonelli's theorem applies theorem applies and so we get that the L 1 norm of f over the product space x cross y this is equal to by definition the integral of uh, mod f over d mu over, over the product space and by Tonelli Tonelli's theorem we get that this is equal to the integral of of uh, x over x of uh, g d mu x where uh, g x is given by the integral of mod f x over y, but this is nothing but the integral of the modulus of f x d mu y and this is nothing but the L 1 norm over y of the function f of x. So, if this norm over the product space is finite this implies that uh, 
the L1 norm, first of all that this integral g d mu x is finite, which means that g x is finite for mu x almost everywhere x in x and this implies that f x is in L1 of x uh, L1 of y mu y for mu x almost everywhere x in x and similarly the result holds for f y. So, this shows that Fubini's theorem holds. So, similarly f y belongs to L 1 over x for mu y almost everywhere y in y which finishes finishes the proof of Fubini's theorem. So, now some remarks are in order. So, remark first is that uh, the Fubini Tonelli theorem, Fubini Tonelli theorem is used uh, together, meaning that if we want to know, so if we want to know that uh, f is in L1 of x cross y mu x cross mu y, then we can evaluate evaluate the L1 norm L1 norm over x cross y using Tonelli's theorem by repeated integration. So, this will show us which uh, will show whether uh, norm of f l 1 x cross y is finite or not, because it is always easier to um, do repeated integration than uh, direct integration over the product space. And then once you know that it is L1, then you can, <coughs> then uh, we can evaluate the integral over of f over this product space by using repeated integration. So, the change of order is then permitted and then we can use it. Another remark is that if you take x equal to y equal to the natural numbers and f and m to be some double sequence and a and m, this is a double sequence then uh, we have that if a and m is non negative for all m n then we can change the order of summation n equal to 1 to infinity a n m m equal to 1 to infinity, this is equal to n equal to 1 to infinity a n m, uh, then again m equal to 1 to infinity a n m and both are equal to the double sum in n square of a n m. Here uh, the definition for any 
arbitrary set arbitrary set x we can define uh, the sum over sum over so this a x is a function a x might be a function of on x and this is equal to the supremum of over the finite subsets f is finite of x in f a x. So, this is the now a finite sum and then you take the supremum. So, this is by definition and this is the definition we can use. So, this is nothing but supremum of over a finite subsets of n 2 finite then we can use uh, n m in f a n m. So, now this is uh, two finite sums then you can use the formula for finite sums and you can also interchange. So, this uh, holds for uh, double summations of doubly infinite sequences. And then lastly, uh, Tonelli's theorem theorem fails to hold in general for uh, in general if either x or y are is not sigma finite sigma finite. So, an example is example is x equal to y equal to 0 1 and uh, mu. So, b x can be taken to be the Lebesgue sigma algebra over 0 1 and b y and so mu x is the Lebesgue measure and b y is the power set of 0 1 with uh, mu y the counting measure. And so, if d is the diagonal in 0 1 cross 0 1. So, this is x cross x comma x such that x in 0 1. This is a subset of x cross y which is nothing but 0 1 square. Then if we take the integral over x and then the integral over y of the indicator function of d. So, first we integrate with respect to mu y which is the counting measure and then with respect to mu x which is the Lebesgue measure. <coughs> then this is equal to the following. So, note that uh, chi d x y this is equal to 1 if x equal to y and 0 otherwise. So, this is uh, the integral of the measure with respect to the counting measure of the set uh, y in y such that x equal to y uh, d mu x and now this is just 1 because there is only one point which is equal to x over 0 1 because x is fixed here. So, the measure is equal to 1. So, then you get just the integral of the Lebesgue measure over 0 1 this is equal to 1. On the other hand, on the other hand, if you take the integral over y first and then the integral over x first of the indicator function, first with respect to the 
Lebesgue measure and then with respect to the counting measure. Then again, uh, for any fixed to y, this is going to be non-zero uh, only when x equal to y. So, only one point in x contributes and this has Lebesgue measure 0. So, therefore, the inner one is 0. So, this is uh, simply 0 times d mu y and this is 0. So, this means that these two things are not equal. So, uh, chi d x y d mu y d mu x is not equal to y x chi d y chi d x y d mu x d mu y and uh, here note that the second space y with the counting measure counting measure uh, mu y is not sigma finite and so even though your uh, this uh, indicator function of d is measurable still uh, we do not have that uh, the, the interchange of order of integration uh, is allowed. So, in this case it, it, it fails to hold. So, therefore, this sigma finiteness is a necessary condition for uh, this Tonelli's theorem to hold. <coughs> so, let me finish the lecture here and uh, in the next week's lectures we will see a new topic which is the uh, Lebesgue's differentiation theorem.